Parallels Utils is a small uh, mini project uh, that consists of a couple of scripts that uh, will help you in your everyday uh, work with the Parallels uh, virtual machine images. Uh, the main uh, purpose of this is to um, uh, make possible to easily start your virtual machines and also to synchronize it. Uh, for example, you may have um, uh, ba basic images that will be synchronized to your uh, remote uh, server and uh, when required you can uh, pull uh, fresh ones, have uh, fresh copies uh, in proper directories. So, for example, during the development you may uh, like erase the working version of the image and then um, uh, start with a fresh one when required. Uh, this is especially needed when you have intensive development, when you need uh, to quickly restore uh, to the to the clean state uh, of uh, the virtual machine. Uh, of course, you can use uh, various snapshots, but uh, since I, I, in, on my projects I uh, have need for uh, clean installations and um, uh, working on the multiple computers, uh, this uh, make it easier to synchronize like on a couple of laptops the same images. We will start by uh, cloning the project. Uh, as you can see here, this is a URL where you can uh, find uh, our, this this uh, little project. Also, there is a, a project documentation that explains uh, pretty much everything that we will be covering during this uh, tutorial. So, as I said, I will I will clone the project, and uh, I will clone it in some proper directory. I'm in my home directory, so I will create a directory parallels workshop. Okay. Here I will create one directory for the utils. Okay. Mm. Uh, there will be a uh, three, uh, actually two additional directories. One is images, where uh, in images directory, we will hold our raw images, uh, the, the ones that are uh, uncompressed, I mean PYM, uh, PVM files. So uh, I will make a directory for them. Sorry. And the one for compressed uh, images, uh, these are the ones that we are pulling from the server or uh, the ones that we are creating uh, before we synchronize files to server. So files are compressed to, to consume less space on remote uh, endpoints. Also, I will need one directory that will uh, contain all working images, the ones that are uh, uh, used in regular development. And this is pretty much all that we need uh, for this. So I will now clone the project. And we will wait a second or two until cloning is uh, completed. As you can see, there is a couple of files. Uh, the main uh, scripts that we will be uh, using are run.sh, uh, run shell scripts, and uh, the one responsible for publishing images to remote uh, endpoints. We will start first uh, by running images, uh, getting it from the remote endpoint, configuring uh, everything, and then we will, uh, in the second part of this small uh, tutorial, um, uh, create uh, our own uh, parallels images that will be uh, compressed and synchronized with a remote endpoint. So um, to run something, uh, we, we will uh, execute, of course, a shell script uh, for running and uh, absolute path to the uh, PV, uh, PVM image. Um, so in our case, this is my home folder, then Parallels workshop and then a using directory. So I will I will probably uh, uh, reference one of the images that are actually synchronized with my server. 
So I have some uh, images already uh, being used in other projects. So I will just copy paste my uh, my files in the file name section. And this is it. Of course, there is a couple of files that we need to define. Uh, the first one is uh, image location settings. Uh, this is the file that will actually point where we will keep our uh, images. Uh, in our case, I, I, I will edit. Uh, I will actually uh, yeah, okay. I will first create empty file, and then I will put their path uh, to the directory. This is the file that we need. So our actually uh, images directory is this one. Okay, I will use absolute path to the images directory, copy. And image Where I am, where am I? Oh, okay. I made a mistake. Uh, so I will move just. And typos everywhere, okay. Uh, because I cloned in the wrong directory, so I'm back in utils. Uh, so I will now put the path that I uh, just mentioned. So now uh, our utils will know that the root uh, directory that, that will contain uncompressed and compressed images is uh, this one. So uh, all, all um, uh, compressed files will be put in compressed directory and all unextracted uh, and uncompressed uh, images, uh, PVM files will be contained inside. Uh, inside. Uh, okay, uh, next thing that uh, we will do is to try uh, to run uh, this script again and uh, see what is next that we need to configure. Actually, there is a uh, three steps uh, required uh, to do to completely cover you uh, uh, running and synchronization. I will, I will actually find it from history because I have the whole part there. Okay, uh, next thing uh, is uh, image provider settings file. This is the one that will uh, actually contain um, URL, uh, base URL of our remote uh, backend. Actually, the one that will be used for downloading images. I have already uh, up and running backend that, uh, where I published my uh, compressed files, so I will edited I will copy paste from my project uh, this domain will be something yours where you um, some website where you are uh, uh, holding your uh, images and now uh, we are ready to run. So uh, I try to run CentOS Linux 7 PVM image uh, to be able to run exactly this name. You must have a publish, uh, published image. Um, I will show you how to publish your images. So for now, let's say that we have something published. You will have to publish your own images before you actually run it. Uh, and now image provider is missing. Okay. Uh, I didn't uh, use image provider settings. I edited probably the wrong image provider settings. There is the
what I have this file. Okay, I have typo probably. Yes, exactly. Okay, let's try it again. And now, since we, we satisfied everything, uh, our uh, file will be saved, as, as I mentioned, into images, compressed, and then uh, uh, the file that we are downloading from uh, our remote endpoint. Uh, it will take some time uh, for the file to be downloaded. And once uh, download is completed, uh, all uh, data will be uh, saved uh, and uncompressed into uncompressed directory. So instead of images compressed, uh, everything is in uncompressed. Uh, I will also mention that uh, compressed files will not be removed. So if you remove accidentally a uncompressed version and run again script, uh, then um, uh, we will just perform instead of downloading because we already have uh, tar gz file will just uncompress and copy uh, from uh, uh, basic images uh, your image into uh, the the directory where you uh, keep your working uh, images now we are uncompressing uh, our image after that we will uh, start uh, our operating system and we will be uh, able to use it thanks to this we are able to use uh, multiple working machines and uh, quickly remove and uh, and start from a certain point uh, with with a blank uh, virtual machine. We will wait maybe ten or twenty seconds. I'm not sure. It depends uh, how fast is your machine. This is standard MacBook Pro with i7 processor, so it shouldn't take uh, too much time to uncompress this. Image is ready. And now we will uh, start our virtual machine. Uh, you can see here that every time we, we run a certain virtual machine, we will um, assign it uh, a special identifier so there is no um, messing with, with the uh, images with the same name. So uh, on the base same name, a, a special identifier is uh, added. And here it is, our Sans Linux is running. I can now uh, log in as a root, for example. And I will t uh, terminate this uh, virtual machine. Uh, if I repeat the same script, since we already have everything, our uh, uh, virtual machine will just start. We don't have to download again or to uncompress or to copy a uh, file. And uh, after we terminate this this machine, I will show you where we actually um, uh, put our just a second, okay put our files. The script did everything for us. <clears throat> okay. Okay, um, this is my hard drive, this is parallels, this is my uh, home directory, no, this document, my home directory, so we created parallels workshop directory, uh, all images are inside images, the one that we put in settings, compressed are files that we uh, downloaded uh, from the remote uh, endpoint or that we created uh, when we executed the synchronization procedure, we will do that later. And uncompressed is the one that contains uh, uncompressed uh, parallels image that is actually a base image. Using is the working one and the, the one that you are starting. Uh, and once you modify the content of the, your uh, of your uh, of uh, the virtual machine file system, uh, everything will be uh, put uh, in this file and its contents. So uh, if I just remove now this file and we will erase uh, the working image. However, uh, uncompressed base image is here still. So I will once again uh, run this script. And as you see, we already have uncompressed version that will be just deployed. And once it is deployed, we will again uh, run it. So 
Xamdus Linux is running. Sorry, I typed the wrong password. Okay, shut down. Next, what I will try is to remove reusing directory and to remove uncompressed version of the of the uh, image. So there is only compressed one. If I do that, I will again uncompress uh, targz file and uh, compressed version will be uh, uncompressed version will be again here. As you can see, now it's only 25 megabytes, but once uncompression is uh, completed, the size of the file will be much bigger. Again, we need to wait a little bit. And just be patient. We will after this try with one more image and then we will image is ready. That means that it's uncompressed. As you can see, the file size is much bigger now. CentOS Linux is uh, booting up. And we are able to interact with our virtual machine. It is running. So I will not just terminate this one. I will try to um, start now CentOS 8. This is also a uh, uh, image file that is uh, synchronized on my uh, remote endpoint. How it looks like, it's uh, your uh, remote URL with all published images. In my case, I have only uh, these two targz files and now I will uh, synchronize and uh, download Linux 8, CentOS Linux 8. And now it is downloaded exactly this file from this endpoint, my base domain and images parallel directory. So as you can see here, um, this is exactly uh, the same domain uh, and path and the file that I'm targeting. Of course, like uh, last time, it will take some time uh, to perform uh, download of the compressed uh, version of the of the image and then once uh, image is downloaded it will be uncompressed and uh, deployed and then a virtual machine will be started so we will wait a minute or two it depends of your internet speed uh, capabilities of your remote endpoint and after that the speed of your computer how fast is your cpu how much memory you have but on standard development machines it's not some insane amount of time uh, and of course you will not wait every time since once you download your image it's de already there on your computer that you're using at that moment we are almost done with the compression i think okay image is ready This is it, CentOS Linux 8 is downloaded and it is starting. As you can see now, uh, in our Parallels man Desktop Manager, we can see that we are actually running two machines with these identifiers that help us to, to distinguish between running uh, virtual machines okay we have now our CentOS 8 started okay so i will shut down this one and i will shut down this one okay the current version that we were using uh move to the uh, Okay, uh, so uh, let's uh, now uh, switch to the second part of this tutorial and uh, here we will show you how to uh, synchronize your, your uh, images and make them uh, base images that can be downloaded and used on other computers. So just for the uh, proof of concept and demonstration, I will actually uh, take one of these images that we already have 
and I will make du duplicate of Santos Linux 7 and call it test machine 1. So what I need to do is uh, to put uh, this machine inside uh, uncompressed directory. So this is the one that uh, uh, contains all uncompressed versions. As I mentioned, using is the one that will uh, contain all uh, working um, images that are being used actively. And I need to run synchronization script. However, uh, to be able to run synchronization script, I need to uh, provide uh, a couple of uh, configurations. As I mentioned, uh, we already defined two. So uh, run dot s, uh, um, sorry, publish images shell script will uh, in, execute uh, publishing of images, but it requires to define the synchronization script. In our examples directory, there is an example uh, of a synchronization script that uh, uh, I am using similar one with different credentials and different endpoint. So uh, we will create, create it. Okay, this is image sync.sh. Uh, we need to provide a synchronization script since uh, your will be maybe different. Maybe you will not use R sync or different mechanism completely to publish to remote endpoint. Your uh, um, uh, synchronization script may be completely different implemented. But uh, this is this is uh, what we need to define, and it accepts uh, one one um, uh, argument that's uh, the the path to the uh, machine that you are synchronizing. Okay. Oh. What I say? Type something. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry. CP. And let's have a look how this uh, example synchronization script looks like. Mm. So it does uh, uh, accept uh, uh, source. This is uh, the base path where is a remote location of directory, which the, the one where we want to publish. So uh, in this, in, and it's based on our sync. In our example, we have a user to define, password on the, on, on the remote endpoint, of course, a path to the remote point, in our case, it takes where directory. And this is the one that is provided by, by uh, synchronization script itself. Uh, and everything else is just invoking uh, rsync uh, command. I will just uh, overwrite this script with the, with the one that I already have defined. It's in my file system. Okay, parallels workshop. This is where we are keeping our stuff, and this is uh, utils directory. Mm. Image sync. What I'm doing? And image sync is the one that we uh, needed. So what I want to do now is just to synchronize uh, all my stuff. And uh, publish images is a script. Now, as you can see, we are compressing uh, from uncompressed uh, directories all files that don't have uh, proper 
um, tar gz version in, in one compressed directory we, are, we skipped uh, CentOS Linux 8 because we downloaded one and we already have uh, tar gz file uh, the new machine that we created uh, test one test machine one pvm doesn't have a compressed version and after we uh, create tar gz file we will uh, execute uploading and then uh, this file will appear on our remote backend in our in my case here i will have one more file uh, so i will be able to download it and uh, use on a different computer this will take some time so we should maybe wait a bit uh, it will not take too much time minute or two again it uh, really depends uh, of the speed of your uh, computer so on um, more powerful and newer processors this will be a much uh, faster process to perform and now we are performing synchronization this is the file that is being uploaded so you can see here the part compressed directory and we are uploading to this remote directory it's probably if I refresh now there will be something new like mm, temporarily ver file of my pvn image but that means soon after this upload process is done we will have everything uh, there of course uh, now as you can see here there is a tar gz file uh, you may notice that like original size in my case was 1.4 gigabytes and uh, compressed version is a little more than uh, half of gigabyte so this is much better than uh, putting the whole uncompressed pvm file to emote, uh, remote endpoint uh, uh, it will uh, consume some time uh, with the uncompression and the stuff but it will reduce uh, download time and uh, save me bandwidth on my uh, remote uh, endpoint my backend so this is how how actually um, this uh, set of scripts is working it is uh, required to compress your images because it will reduce file size on the server so let's see how it progresses uh, we are 20 percent done so depending on the speed of your internet connection and the, the size of your compressed image it will take some time to perform uh, upload Finally, we, we completed our uh, synchronization, and now, as you can see here, uh, on our, in my, in my case, on my uh, remote endpoint, we have this uh, test machine one uh, published, and I will just, uh, for uh, proof of concept, uh, uh, remove compressed and uncompressed files. As you can see, I'm not having anything in use, and now I will try to run test machine one. which will trigger uh, download, uncompression, and execute my machine. Just to check name, test machine one, yes. Okay, so what happens? We, we since I rem have removed uh, tar gz file, I will now download uh, image, uncompress it, and run it. Very simple. So if I reinstall my computer and uh, I don't want to keep all these image files, I can just clean up some space or do this uh, system reinstallation and then run the script. Everything will be pulled from my um, images repository, my remote endpoint, and it will be easy to use. Also, if you uh, have situation like I do, for example, to use uh, multiple development machines, like uh, you have two computers, for example, or more, uh, then it, it's even better to have this thing as your tool because you, you will be able to uh, pull images without need to copy uh, parallels images to your flash drive or hard drive and so on. We will wait a little bit more and we will have it this star gz file uh, downloaded
biz de onuzdan. Now uh, uncompre uh, uncompression is performed, and uh, uh, after co uncompression is completed, once again, like we did with the CentOS 7 and CentOS 8 operating system and its images, uh, we, will, we will run uh, the clone actually of one of these two and uh, be able to do whatever we need to do. I mean, it's up to us. Everything that I have explained so far uh, can be uh, found in uh, uh, on the readme page on the GitHub repository where you can uh, find uh, uh, this this set of scripts, uh, this utils or whatever we can call it. <clears throat> so just watch again if you want video or uh, read manual and that will be, will be enough for you to be able to run your virtual machines uh, from command line and to uh, have synchronization mechanism and your uh, all uh, images synchronized and have them available for the future use. This is it. I'll terminate this machine. Shutdown. And this is where we are, where we will actually finish with our uh, workshop tutorial, whatever uh, we can call it, exercise or demonstration uh, for today. If you have any questions, you can find me on GitHub and uh, suggest uh, whatever you want uh, as a um, new features or improvements. We can we can. Uh, extend the scripts or we can extend it together create a pull request and i will probably review it and approve any improvement is welcome and i hope that you will uh, find this uh, useful in your everyday uh, development workflow uh, have a good day and enjoy parallel utility scripts <laughs>